We recently received a thoughtful comment from a viewer requesting a video on the topics of weight versus fat loss in two current pharmaceutical research areas. I did some digging and found some interesting scientific reports. But before we get into discussing these, please keep in mind that nothing in this video is intended to be any form of medical advice nor recommendations for your personal help. This is strictly a discussion of current research and opinions on the topic of fat loss versus weight loss, related pharmaceuticals under research, and how current biomedical research might shape our future. Research is always growing and changing as new discoveries are made. Also, when considering biology and biomedical research, keep in mind that everyone is uniquely individual, so what works for one person may not be a good fit for another. Many factors can influence your overall health, including genetics, pre-existing health conditions, other medications and supplements you're on, diet, your environment, allergies, and much more. But all that having been said, what does current research say about fat versus weight loss, and what's the difference? Most often, a clinical measurement of body mass index, or BMI, consists of a calculation based on your total weight and your height. If your BMI is over or under a certain amount, conventional advice is generally to gain or lose weight. But is this really the most accurate measure of weight as related to your health? Do we really want to lose weight, or do we want to lose fat, and what's the difference? Often, weight and fat are thought of as the same thing, but just hopping on the scale weighs everything. Muscle, bone, organs, lots of things like losing muscle mass or water would cause the number on the scale to go down and could put us at a lower BMI, but might not necessarily be healthy. Instead of just considering overall weight, it's important to look at actual fat loss. Obesity is a condition where there is too much excess body fat at the cellular level, which can lead to other health conditions like heart trouble, diabetes, and certain cancers. Just diet and exercise often aren't enough to reverse obesity. Many factors like genetics, health conditions, hormone levels, microbes in your gut, and more can all contribute to someone developing obesity. For these reasons, there's interest in developing pharmaceuticals to promote loss of fat. BAM15 is a compound that was identified in 2014 in this publication that screened over 5,000 chemicals looking for drugs with an effect on energy usage in the body, called mitochondrial uncouplers. Mitochondria are the parts of the cell that produce energy in the form of a molecule called ATP. The mitochondria produce ATP using a protein called ATP synthase, which is like a motor that is powered by a stream of positively charged particles called protons. BAM15 disrupts this flow of protons. This makes the cell have to work harder and expend more energy to compensate. This ultimately causes genes to become turned on that contribute to increasing metabolism. As a bonus, BAM15 also combats tissue damage and inflammation by inhibiting the release of free radicals and processes of cellular death. Let's look at some of these functions of BAM15 in more detail. BAM15 can combat inflammation in a couple of ways. A cell contains DNA, of course, but there are actually two types of DNA in your cells, nuclear and mitochondrial DNA. Nuclear DNA is stored in the cellular nucleus, a large compartment in your cells, but mitochondria have their own DNA stored within them. When mitochondria are damaged, their DNA can get released. This mitochondrial DNA can trigger harmful free radicals that damage more mitochondria in a vicious cycle or feedback loop. BAM15 helps to stop this process. BAM15 can also help prevent inflammation by influencing macrophages, a type of white blood cell, to take on anti-inflammatory properties. So how can BAM15 be used in the treatment of conditions like obesity? Through its action on mitochondria, BAM15 increases energy expenditure and reduces fat accumulation at the cellular level. Importantly, this effect takes place independently of lifestyle or caloric intake. This makes it different from medications that promote weight loss in a general way by decreasing appetite, for example. The question of fat loss versus overall weight loss is especially important in some obesity-related conditions. For example, a condition called sarcopenic obesity is where someone has high fat levels and low muscle levels. For such conditions, SPAM-15 also shows promise. Individuals with sarcopenic obesity often have reduced levels of mitochondrial fusion protein 2, which plays a big role in mitochondrial structure. Mitochondria aren't just the small bean-like structures shown in textbooks. Under the microscope, mitochondria form a complex network. Low levels of this mitochondrial fusion protein can cause this mitochondrial network to be more fragmented. 
BAM15 increases levels of this fusion protein, promoting a more robust mitochondrial structure. But BAM15 may have additional therapeutic uses and conditions that can be related to obesity, such as type 2 diabetes. In mice, BAM15 was reported to lead to reversal of insulin resistance and lowered secretion of glucagon, a hormone that inhibits the effects of insulin. Through all these metabolic effects, BAM15 may have promise for controlling blood glucose levels. This drug may also have an even wider range of uses. For example, BAM15 may reduce the inflammation associated with sepsis, a serious condition where the body goes into shock due to infection. This drug may also have beneficial effects in the treatment of liver disease and could impact cardiovascular health. Dysfunctional mitochondria can also play a role in cancers and neurodegenerative diseases. But what makes BAM15 different from other pharmaceutical candidates that also impact mitochondrial function and metabolism? A key plus about this drug is that it shows less toxicity than other compounds. After all, disrupting the mitochondrial energy production process is pretty extravagant. So it isn't surprising that many compounds that influence mitochondrial respiration can also cause toxicity. But BAM15 appears to be far less toxic than its contenders. So when can we expect to see this drug on the market? The current state of research on BAM15 appears to be that it shows very promising results in combating obesity and a number of potentially related conditions in mice. At the end of the day, mice just aren't a substitute for studying the effect of a drug directly in the human body. Mice and people are obviously very different. But animal testing is one of the first steps toward a drug entering clinical trials. Clinical trials in people pass through several phases, beginning first with a small number of people to evaluate proper dose and side effects, and then progressing to larger groups. But the clinical trial must first be approved. For example, most clinical trials in the United States must be given approval first by the FDA and an Institutional Review Board, or IRB, which evaluates the researcher's plan and assesses safety concerns. This is based on having sufficient basic research studies involving animal testing and studies of how the drug works at the molecular level. In the case of BAM15, there do appear to be quite a few studies published over the past few years highlighting encouraging results, and there does appear to be interest from researchers in moving this drug towards clinical trials. There are, however, a few outstanding questions, such as the exact mechanism of this drug in different conditions like sepsis. Also, the time that BAM15 is expected to stay in the body is rather short, around four hours. It also doesn't dissolve well in water, which is a consideration for administration. But possibly, a few more basic research studies in animals or cells in the lab could help move this drug into the clinical trial phases soon. There's another fascinating, completely different treatment strategy to promote fat loss that's being researched: TSLP cytokines. A cytokine is a type of protein that acts like a messenger between cells in your immune system. A study published back in 2021 showed that a specific cytokine, thymic-stromal lymphopoietin or TSLP, could promote fat loss and counteract obesity. TSLP cytokines are produced naturally by your body and cells of the skin, lung, and gut. In this research study, the authors artificially raised levels of TSLP cytokines in mice through genetic manipulation. This was done by injecting the mice with a virus. When viruses infect cells, they attach onto the cell and inject their own genetic material, like a tiny needle and syringe for cells. In the lab, researchers can take advantage of this natural property of viruses by engineering them to carry genetic material encoding genes of choice. Here, the researchers injected mice with a virus carrying a copy of the gene for TSLP. After a couple of weeks, mice lost almost all of their white adipose tissue, or fat, but only lost about five percent of their total weight. The mice otherwise seemed normal, except for one thing: the mice became covered with a greasy substance. The researchers analyzed this substance and found that it contained cholesterol, triglycerides, and free fatty acids. The increase in TSLP cytokines was stimulating the secretion of sebum, a waxy, fatty substance that, in normal conditions, is responsible for keeping the skin healthy and moisturized. Here, the mice with increased TSLP cytokine levels were effectively secreting excess fat out of their skin. This was quite a surprising and unexpected finding. But what are the implications for therapeutics involving TSLP cytokines? Although this study was published a few years ago, it is still very early in the basic research process. 
there are still some important questions to be investigated further. TSLP cytokines in the body participate in allergic inflammation. Although the researchers who discovered the novel property of these cytokines to promote fat loss didn't observe any inflammatory damage in the mice, it doesn't necessarily rule out the possibility of inflammatory or other side effects in people. The researchers point out that the biology of TSLP in humans is more complex than in mice. Also, the method this research study used to increase the TSLP cytokines in mice used viral genetic manipulation, not a traditional medication. Also, there might be other practical considerations as well, like having greasy skin. However, this was a fascinating finding that is definitely worth pursuing further. TSLB cytokines may be part of a molecular process that new pharmaceuticals could be designed to target, for example. Likely, more basic research studies in cells and animals are underway right now. Although it seems that pharmaceutical administration of TSLP cytokines are still a ways off from clinical trials, it will be interesting to see what future studies observe about these cytokines and obesity, and what treatments based on this research could be revealed. What are your thoughts on BAM15 and TSLP cytokines for promoting fat loss? Have a scientific research paper or topic in biotechnology you'd like to see here as a video? Drop it in the comments. If you enjoyed this discussion, don't forget to subscribe and share to help this channel out. And remember.